Hi, I was here, and today I have a DAP I know absolutely nothing about. It was sent to me by a guy we know called Chris, who you might know as Hawaii Bad Boy. And we did a bit of a DAP exchange because he doesn't live too far from me, and uh, well, yeah, let's check it out. It's an Opus number no. three. It's supposed to be like yet another Korean brand which makes really nice sounding DAPs. So that sounds good to me. Let's have a have a look what's in the box. Now, of course, this has been this has been opened before. It's not the first time, so we're kind of cheating here. And well, oh, it's not too not too large. It's a bit wide, but otherwise, it looks like a fairly standard player. We have a volume control on the side. Must be a Korean thing. On the uh, we have our requisite play forward and back, which looks very kind of AK-ish. Uh, USB and a single slot on the bottom, okay, and power button and balanced out and single-ended output on the top. Now the one thing I do gather is this does, I think, does optical output as well. And so, okay, that looks good. What's in the box? Instructions, I guess. Oh, screen protector and instructions and bits. Looks good. I'm going to predict there's a USB cable in here. Yes, I'm correct. And a leather case. Well, it looks like that's that's where it's at, I guess. Leather case for use. Okay, so it looks very kind of much like the AK leather case. Is this a Minerva, what's it, Minerva or whatever? It just says Opus Genuine, three genuine leather. Made in Korea. Okay. Sound good. That works for me. And uh, well, okay. So the main thing is, um, we'll have a gand look at the interface and and have a listen and see how it goes. So I had a good run with the Opus Three, and well, it's been an interesting experience. I mean, let's have a quick look size-wise, so you get an idea how big it is. I have an AK three eighty here as comparison, another Korean DAP, of course, and it's kind of you know. Uh, it's it's fairly more kind of you know rectangular in shape. It's got the chamfering here to make it feel a bit more kind of slim. At least it doesn't have that quite excessive chunkiness of the Calyx M. Uh, you know, if I turn them sideways, it, well, you know, the chamfering on the the AK380 makes it seem even slimmer. Probably a better comparison is something like an X7, which we've got floating around on the desk here. Uh, you know, the and this has got Vel Velcro on the back, so just ignore that. Uh, you know, it's kind of the same kind of size. And this, of course, this X7 has the uh, uh, you know, the, it doesn't have the amp module in here, so it's a bit smaller than it really is. So this is actually reasonably sized, but like all other DAPs I've had, it's got some kind of sharp edges. So I tend to use it with a leather case because, well, you know, I don't want my pockets or whatever destroyed. So, but that was good. It's good that it's come with this nice leather case. So, but uh, the main thing was the user interface was kind of a, a pain to use. And that's kind of really going to make this uh, review kind of less comprehensive and the reason was so you power it on and you get into this uh, user interface here which is fine is your playback screen now where do we go i want to go back to folders where are they hiding no you don't well this is swiping song oh no hold on here this tiny menu hiding in here which is almost invisible now i was in a folder and when i first powered it on i wanted to jump back up the hierarchy right so i hit this back button and it went back to now playing now it's not going to do this because i've already drilled down again but it's like, what? How do I get back to my, how do I get back to the hierarchy? Oh, I've got to hit this one. And then you get back to your folders. So once you, when you first power it on, the user interface kind of behaves differently from when you're actually, actually using it, after you have already been using it, which is a bit of a nuisance. So I was, the, the irritating thing was I was playing back and uh, the DSD and then, oh, just let me check out some other music and then, oh, pause in the music. What? And you know, like when you've got a, a, a maybe a phone or a, like a, I think on my iPad or something or like a Bluetooth headphones when it wants to beep and it'll just cut the music out for a fraction of a second. Well, it was like that. I was like, is this thing running out of bandwidth or is it something wrong with the system? And so, yeah, cut out, cut out. And I was like, oh, this is just really silly. So I'd had that problem with Tidal and uh, that was kind of becoming irritating. And I thought it was just Tidal, and I so updated the APK, but it turned out it seems to be the whole system is kind of a bit funny. And the most irritating thing was I was playing the music, my, my daughter came in and, and wanted to talk to me, so I, I just hit, hit pause on the side as you do, and the music didn't pause. I'm like, ah, pause, damn you! Didn't want to pause, so I just pulled my earphones out and left it till it stopped. 
It's like, mm, this thing is really buggy. And this is version 1.000, I don't know how many zeros, version four of the firmware. Well, it ends with a four. So um, that was kind of irritating and it kind of put me off wanting to do much, much listening with it. Uh, now, interface wise, there's some interesting stuff in here. To, you can go into the, they've got the usual Android stuff here. Uh, you can go into settings and the interesting stuff that exists is output, which also has an option where you have line out, uh, your balance control, uh, your, your gain control, which I think it, I'm not sure, I guess it's just the, the, the volume output, which I guess is digital. An interesting thing is DSP mode. You can actually have I2S directly into the uh, DAC, I suppose, or, or a 32-bit uh, uh, processing via an XMOS processor, which makes a tiny, tiny bit of difference, but not really a significant amount. Uh, but the main thing is what's listed as streaming in here. I mean, most of the other options are fairly mundane, so there's nothing really to, to, to look at, except if you want to see what languages are available, let's give you a quick glance in there. Uh, Dutch, English, Spanish, French, Polish? Uh, we're thinking Ru uh, Russian, Korean, uh, two Chinese, and Japanese, in case you're wondering. Uh, the interesting thing, as I said, is the streaming, which should really be called applications, because the main interface is this, this uh, kind of uh, this player, which you've already seen, the Audio Opus player. And you can install, if you upload uh, an APK to the downloads folder, you can even upload an interface to the downloads folder. And I installed Tidal, and so you can, you know, Chris installed Spotify, and you know, you can go in and, and use it, which is fine, but there's a slight problem. Let me give you an example. Okay, let's go to my music. Uh, what do I have? Playlists. Okay, let's see, I've got one here, 84, which is actually my seven, kind of rated seven list of Radio Paradise tracks, which I'm trying to find some, some good, more good music to listen with. So I listen to some music, and okay, now I want to go back to the music player. No home button. Oh, what do I do? Hidden in here is a back button. If you if you pull up, so you go back, and back, and back, and back. Now let's see if you've been in Tidal or Spotify. I've been drilling down like a, a long way. Well, I don't know if you can go back. Actually, if you can jump all the way back, I don't think you can. Title is as irritating as anything. Why doesn't it stay where I want it? I don't want to go to the main top menu. I wonder if it'll let... No. What a pain. Okay, so then I can get back to... Back. And we're back. So, mm, yeah, it's kind of irritating. And it kind of put me off wanting to listen to a lot of... With a lot of uh, headphones and what have you. But what I did listen with was... Hi-Fi Man's RE2000s, the 60 ohm dynamic driver, they're almost equivalent to using headphones and uh, I've got a Campfire Audio's Andromedas here with a Dita Dream cable so I had the you know the, the four pole cable plug I could put on there and that was my main listening I didn't do a lot of stuff with other things because you know th that that playback irritation the other thing is there's not a power output listed there's a there's a voltage how many volts the thing will put out but I prefer to I get a fair idea of how things run to a degree, also seeing how many milliamps it can put out. And there's various arguments about this I won't go into, but anyway. So the, via the balance out, it's supposed to be a bit better. But the overall sound signature didn't really change. And that was that it's init your initial impression is it's got a nice warm sound signature. And, you know, we, we talk about coloured stuff as being good or bad, but that was, that was how it is. It's kind of a bit warm on the warm side. And that was really pleasant to listen with. And you think that's really nice. Well, that's a nice bit of tuning, but... Then I started listening to vocals and there's a bit of harshness came out in the treble. So that warmth has obviously sacrificed some uh, of the sound quality and it wasn't as clean sounding, you know, but the, you know, the X7 will probably sound a little bit colder in comparison. The Calyx M will be in between. The Calyx M seems to do just the amount, of, just a tiny bit of warmth, you know, as I've already said, without, uh, you know, bringing out any harshness. The X7 is kind of nothing but the facts. Uh, you know, you've got your very slight warm mojo. And this seems to not have any issues with, with treble or whatever, but I mean, it's again, it's only a tiny slight, slight touch caused by, uh, there's a couple there's coupling caps and uh, a filter tuning in there. But this kind of just overdid it and it kind of ruined the warmth with that harshness. So yeah, that's kind of how it is. And especially with the X7 II coming out, that's kind of making, that's kind of, 
you know, pushing the luck with this kind of thing. And as critical as I am of, you know, the user interface, you have to think about the massive amount of effort it takes to, to design, build, uh, you know, set up hardware with Android, program Android so you can get high res output, blah, 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 blah. All that kind of stuff is actually a big effort. So, uh, you know, as, as many faults as it does have, that, it, I mean, you have to applaud the effort of the guy who, who, who created this, this DAP for, for at least trying. He's got three DAPs out there now. And over time, I hope he manages to improve things significantly because, you know, there's some potential there. But, you know, with all the, the bugginess and the, you know, and again, Theo went through this too, uh, with all the kind of bugginess and the issues out there and um, that, that sound, you know, being a bit harsh, it kind of put me off the, the DAP somewhat. But still, I mean, if, you, if, you've, if it's your first high, you know, your first uh, expensive DAP and you like the idea of a slightly warm sound, you probably will enjoy it. So I was not going to say it's, uh, I wouldn't say you wouldn't totally write it off depending on, on but you know, if you're already used to, to high quality sound, you're probably not going to find it too, uh, fan, too uh, amazing or anything like that, especially with the, the user interface problems. But so that's the Opus 3 and I hope you liked the video and give it a thumbs up if you did. Any questions or comments, I've got to send this back to Chris, so you're going to have to ask him for any, uh, any thoughts. He's going to do his Calyx M video in exchange. And... Uh, yeah, share on social media with any, uh, anyone you think will be interested in my videos and, and subscribe if you haven't already because I'll be doing some more dApps and other things in the near future, I hope. And otherwise, I'll see you online.